Welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, myself again, um, except this time I wanted to talk about my sexual orientation. So since the whole thing went down in the U.S. legalizing gay marriage, super exciting, um, I decided I wanted to talk about gay things. Um, in case you didn't know, I'm gay! Um, yeah. So if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter or follow my blog, you already know that. Um, and if you've seen other videos on my channel, then you already know that as well. Um, but yeah, so because of the ruling, I thought this would be a good time to share my coming out story and tell you guys a little bit about um, my experience and hopefully my experience will help somebody um, either come out or just, you know, be okay with who they are because it's totally okay to be gay there's nothing wrong with it um, there's nothing wrong with you you are exactly who you're meant to be and if people don't accept that then screw them if you have any questions for me um, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you the first time I can remember having feelings for a girl I was in kindergarten so very young, um, there was a girl named Alex. She was in my kindergarten class and I was just obsessed. I don't know what it was exactly about her, but I just needed to be around her. So we became fast friends. Um, and I remember one day she came over to my house after school um, and she was wearing these red overalls and I just remember thinking, wow, she looks great in red overalls. And then I needed overalls, of course. I remember my mom was making us some snacks. Um, so she made Alex a sandwich with butter and cheddar cheese. And at that point in my life, I hated cheese. I hated, hated, hated cheese. I hated anything that had to do with cheese, except for pizza. That I liked. But I hated, like, cheese in my sandwiches. Um... And so my mom was making me a bologna sandwich, which was my go-to. Um, and I remember running into the kitchen saying, No, I need a cheese sandwich too. Because I desperately wanted to have something in common with Alex. So that was kind of my first experience of having feelings for a girl that maybe uh, were a little bit more than friendship. Although at the time, I really don't think that I knew that. Um, I just really liked her and I thought she was very pretty. Um, in grade one, I remember there was a boy, Christopher, who got dared to show everyone his penis. He was dared to do that over recess, and he had to do it in class with the teacher there. And so he went to the back of the room, and everyone, like, ran over. All the boys ran over to make sure that he, he was actually do it, doing it. All the girls ran over because they wanted to see and I remember I was the only one who didn't go to the back of the room. I stayed at my desk and I refused to go look at this kid's penis. Um, so I guess that's a pretty good indicator there. Um, I remember in elementary school I only had crushes on my female teachers. Um, same with high school, only female teachers. Um, when I was really young, like five, six, seven, um, I used to invite my female friends over and convince them that they needed to take their clothes off. Um, yeah, that's what I used to do. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. It's not like we actually did anything. Um, I just told them to do it and they did and... Anyway, once I got into high school, I became completely and totally obsessed with Jennifer Lopez, which honestly, who isn't obsessed with Jennifer Lopez? She is so 
gorgeous. She's gorgeous. She's sexy. She is smart. hell is with her not aging I mean what's she 45 now and she looks better than she did 10 years ago I don't understand it but I just hope that that is the way I age as well so I became totally obsessed with JLo in fact I own Gili yeah I'm probably the only person in the world who owns Gili and I, I do um and that was because I remember it came out when I was 13 and I was actually visiting family in Poland at the time and I couldn't see it in theaters and so I waited and waited and waited and I bought it on DVD when it finally came out um, because this was the days before you could find stuff online when it was still in theaters um, that's right those days did exist um, so yeah so I bought it and I watched it and I hated it but I watched it over and over again just because of J-Lo. I, I had crushes on girls throughout high school. Um, I didn't date any girls in high school. I wasn't out in high school, but I remember there was a girl who I was very close with. Um, she was just a friend, and I did not have any romantic feelings toward her. But um, one of her friends uh, felt that I was pulling her away too much. I guess she was jealous or something. Um, so she started going around and saying that I'm a lesbian and that I'm in love with her friend. Um, and it just made me panic so much. And it was in grade nine that this happened. So it was right at the beginning of high school too. And I was just panicking. And I remember messaging her on MSN later that night. And I was like, please stop saying that. It's not true. I'm not a lesbian. I'm straight. I'm just friends with her. Stop saying it. Stop saying it. Stop saying it. Stop saying it. And I stopped hanging out with her friends. In grade nine also was the first time that I had a sexual encounter with a girl. Um, she wasn't my girlfriend, but she was a friend of mine. And so that happened, but I didn't date her and um, I didn't date any girls throughout high school. I actually dated guys throughout high school. Um, there was a friend of mine who I dated and um, he was, I guess, my first boyfriend, you can say. And we dated for a few months and we broke up and we lost contact completely for over 10 years and recently he's come back into my life and it turns out that we're both gay so <laughs> there you go and after him I dated another guy who was incredibly possessive and incredibly jealous um, he was absolutely convinced that one of my friends was in love with me one of my female friends was in love with me uh, which was not true, but I mean now she and I can laugh about it. I did not have romantic feelings for her, however like he was kind of on point in terms of you know there being a girl who's interested in other girls. Um, wasn't her, it was me. We only dated for a short time as well, like three or four months, um, and I broke up with him. So I started watching The L Word. I heard about it while I was, you know, starting to Google things about what it means to be gay, what it means to be a lesbian. Um, I started to watch The L Word. Then I found South of Nowhere and I started to watch that um, and I became so obsessed with Ashley. Um, I think everybody pretty much had a crush on Ashley. She's a bad girl that you just needed to have. Um, Although the L word is awesome in many ways, it also has a lot of downfalls, I feel like. Um, I was really getting into um, all the seasons while I was in university, just starting university, and I remember there was a scene where Dana wanted to know if, um, if Lara was gay. She had all her friends come with her to check out the chef and see if she's gay or not and they had this whole list of criteria that 
a woman needed to fit in order to be considered a lesbian. Things like short nails, things like um, jeans that fit a certain way, um, certain shoes, certain things like that. And so that automatically, to me, meant that I didn't look like a lesbian and I needed to look like a lesbian. So I ended up cutting my nails very short, keeping my nails very short. Um, I started to try and butch it up which honestly never worked out for me. Um, my idea of butching it up was like wearing a baseball cap and a shirt that looked butch and by butch I mean it was a black shirt that said rock paper scissors on it <laughs> and I would wear it a lot um, with cargo pants. So that was my idea of what it meant to be a lesbian based on what I learned from the L word which was kind of unfortunate um, but I feel like a lot of girls go through that phase they feel like they can't be um, you know hyper feminine or you know they can't look a certain way because then they won't be considered gay enough or lesbian enough um, in any case um, I tried that it didn't end up really working out for me, so I just kind of threw it out the window. I was like, whatever, I'm just going to dress however I want to dress. Um, and I started to slowly come out to my close group of friends. Um, and these were people who I went to high school with. Um, so I had known them, most of them already for about four years at this point. Um, and I started to slowly come out to them one by one. Um, and they took it great. I mean, it was like a no big deal thing. Um, most of them actually already said that they knew. I did unfortunately lose some friends. Um, one in particular, I had known her basically since the day I was born um, because our parents were close friends. Um, and she just completely stopped talking to me and didn't want anything to do with me after I told her I was gay. Um, which really hurt at the time. It, it did. It sucked so much. Um, I have realized that people who don't accept you for who you are are not worth your time because honestly your sexual orientation is a small part of who you are. It doesn't define who you are. It doesn't change anything about you other than who you love and that really doesn't matter. Um, anyway, so that really sucked. Um, in terms of coming out to my family, it's always been just me and my mom. So I knew I had to come out to my mom and it was it was hard. It was hard for me. And I mean my mom and I are are really, really close. Like if you've ever seen Gilmore Girls, basically I'm Rory and she's Lorelai. Um, she's always been very open and understanding. So I didn't think that she would like disown me or anything like that. I didn't think that she would um, kick me out of the house, but I was really, really worried that she would be disappointed in me. And that was the last thing that I wanted to do was to disappoint her. So I, uh, I struggled with it a lot and basically just having panic attacks over it, um, serious anxiety issues. Um, and my mom noticed it, obviously, so she would just constantly ask me, you know, what's wrong, what's wrong? Just tell me what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Just just tell me. Um, and I remember one night um, I had been crying a lot that day, and I was really struggling. I, I wanted to tell her, but I, I wasn't ready yet. Um, and I remember I went to bed, and she thought I was asleep. And she came into my room and sat on the edge of my bed and just started kind of stroking my hair um, and saying, you know, it doesn't matter what you tell me because I'm always going to love you. And I just pretended to sleep. I mean, that was probably the best moment ever to open my eyes and just tell her, but I didn't. I was still too scared. So um, I waited, and the next day... Um, I was crying a lot and I was 18 at this point so this was still um, in my first year of university and I was I was really upset I was having panic attacks again and finally she just cornered me in the hallway um, 
she's the type of person who's, you know, who's very impatient and I get that from her. I'm also very impatient. So she cornered me and said, just tell me what it is. Tell me what's going on. And I just started bawling and I couldn't just handle it anymore. And I remember just yelling out, I'm gay! And she just stood there and said, okay, is that it? Because I already knew that. I knew you were gay since, you know, you're five. Um, and I'm just standing there, like, trying to pull myself together because I'm still crying, still having a panic attack. And she's just cool, calm, collected, just like, you know, whatever kind of a thing. And I remember getting so upset, and I was like, what do you mean that's it? It's a huge thing. Don't you hate me? Don't you just want to disown me now? Um, and she said, no, of course not. I love you. You're my daughter, and I'm going to love you regardless. doesn't matter who you are or who you love. And that was probably the best thing I had ever heard from anyone in terms of my coming out process. It was just, it was such a relief and it just felt like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders and I just felt so much calmer about it. Um, now after that, throughout university, I did date some girls here and there. Um, I never introduced them to my mom though because even though she had, you know, basically told me that she accepts me and loves me, I still wasn't sure how she would feel um, like seeing me sit beside a girl or her, hold a girl's hand or kiss a girl um, and I just didn't want to potentially like flaunt it in her face and have her get very upset. So it wasn't until the third year of university that I decided to join um, an LGBT club on campus um, and there I kind of began to really accept myself and really um, be proud of who I was. I wasn't afraid to, you know, wear a rainbow colored bracelet or something like that or um, talk about my sexuality if it ever came up in a conversation with somebody. So through that group I actually met some really great friends, um, one in particular who I'm still in contact with. Um, and I remember she asked me to volunteer for an event and it was where um, we were going to make buttons. Um, like those like clip-on pin-back buttons. Um, and we had like a little machine where you could just like press it down and make your own button and people could bring their own designs or use um, designs that we had pre-made. Um, and so she asked me if I can volunteer for that so I was like, yeah, sure. And I remember going to um, the area where they had set up the table and all the buttons and everything and there were only a few people sitting there and there was this girl sitting on, at the end of the table and I had seen her a few times before I remember seeing her in uh, one of the buildings and she was carrying like a camera bag and a tripod and um, I just remember thinking that she was really really cute um, and she didn't talk a lot she seemed really shy um, but yeah, so I went to the event and she was sitting there and my friend who had asked me to volunteer for the event told me to go sit beside her and so I thought, okay, so this is obviously a setup. Um, but I was like, okay, sure, yeah, I'll sit there. Um, me and this girl started talking and we exchanged phone numbers, we exchanged uh, MSN information, because MSN was still around back then, and we ended up talking a lot on MSN, um, talking a lot over Facebook, and it quickly became a relationship, and it was, it was just like nothing I had ever felt before, because I had seen her around campus, I, I felt like we already kind of had a connection before we even met, um, even though we had never spoken before. Um, but yeah, so meeting her was, and officially speaking with her, was kind of 
awesome and, and nerve-wracking and everything all at once. It was just one of those weird things where it was like I had seen her so many times before um, that I felt like I already knew her, but then it was that moment when we met at the button-making event and started talking that I really felt like, whoa, wait a minute, because this is not just a regular meeting you know, meeting a person that I kind of maybe like. This is like, whoa, I think I'm meeting someone that I love. Um, so as cheesy as it sounds, I guess it was love at first sight. Um, we made it official on Facebook. Um, and yeah, we've been together for five years now. And we're actually getting married next year. I was made for love you Even though we may be hopeless just passing through Every ball scream I don't know what we should do All I know is darling I was made for loving you So I guess that's it for me now. Um, thanks so much for watching. Talk to you guys later. Bye!